Hello and welcome back to ChromeCon. In this talk, we're discussing how CSV injections enable the ability to pwn web apps like a ninja. I'm your sensei, Brian Hostler. You can follow me on Twitter at HostlerBrian3. I'm currently working with a talented counterhack team under the Air Force Education with History program. As a disclaimer, the content of this presentation is not endorsed or representative of the Air Force. A quick overview of what we're covering in this presentation. We're going to explain what a CSV injection is and how this vulnerability continues to be exploited. We'll provide a demonstration on how red teams can craft payloads. Then we'll provide a quick frequently asked questions overview. Finally, we'll provide some ways blue teams can mitigate against these attacks. So what exactly is a CSV injection and why should you care? According to OWASP, a CSV injection occurs when websites allow untrusted input inside CSV files. This is common among websites with input forms exportable to CSV that allow command strings, spreadsheet software such as Excel or LibreOffice interpreted as a formula. It provides a vector for remote code execution or remote exfiltration of sensitive data. It is a spear phishing advanced persistent threat favorite among high profile attacks by sponsored groups and red teams alike. CSV formula injections work thanks to dynamic data exchange protocol that enables interaction from spreadsheet software to perform shell execution. There are numerous warnings that are often ignored by users clicking OK, which provide access to leaked contents of spreadsheets over, over a listening port. There are countless ways to run arbitrary commands through DDE, some simplistic while others highly sophisticated beyond the scope of this presentation. In the first example, we have a command string that calls back to malicious file on our server. The second example is a basic hyperlink to leak cell contents over our listening port. There are plenty of open source tools available on GitHub to facilitate the crafting of CSV injections to include Metasploit, Unicorn, and Office DDE payload. Of course, you can invent your own payload generating script, just make sure to contribute to our community. Next, I'll provide a demonstration with a hyperlink to our local server over listening port and show how easy it is to leak CSV contents through DDE execution. So I have a generic port listener here. Uh, you can use whatever you want, command, command prompt, or in this instance, is a GUI over port 5500. We're gonna go ahead and start listening on that port. And we're gonna, we're gonna run a command to validate that we are in fact listening on that port, which we are. And for our payload, we're gonna craft a simple hyperlink for our users to click that's gonna go back to our server, in this case, localhost over port 5500, and leak the contents of cells A2, A3, A4, A5, simulating an information disclosure leak. So as you can see, when the user clicked the link, all those contents were leaked over port 5500. Now the second example is a simple command string with a callback back to our server to run a remote access Trojan. And as you can see, we get uh, some, some generic you know, warnings from Microsoft Excel. They're saying, hey, look, are you sure you wanna access these external sources? You know, most people click OK, they don't care, or they're not paying attention. Um, we get another prompt that says, hey, are you sure you want to access this remote data? Uh, you can obfuscate this, this warning message to make it look more legitimate. And most people just click OK anyway. And we've successfully uh, downloaded and ran our, our remote access Trojan from our server. So some frequently asked questions, you know, what if the client on the server ports are locked down, they won't allow remote code execution or callbacks to my server? Uh, you can, there's workarounds, uh, one of them being just simply use a command string to move those files, you know, Linux or Windows, depending on the OS, to a location that is browsable through a public directory that you can, that you can act, actually access. You know, won't the commands in the payload look too obvious to a user's trained eye? You can obfuscate the commands, which happens a lot, uh, just, to, just to make it look more legitimate. So when you get those warnings, people say, oh yeah, this, this looks okay, I'm gonna click on it, and they click on it, and, um, and they've successfully exfiltrated that data.
So how do we mitigate against CSV formula attacks? OWASP recommends that no cell begins with equals, plus, minus, or at symbols. They're difficult to mitigate. Uh, it evades most antiviruses. And actually, some bug bounty programs have disallowed this attack because they think it's a user problem. Uh, there's a Microsoft Security Advisory in the registry to go ahead and, if you have Microsoft OS, I highly recommend you go ahead and check this out and apply it to your servers or systems if you haven't already. Uh, you know, use a sandbox to analyze routines and identify any type of anomalies. And most importantly, make sure users are aware of any types of warnings like this to connect to outside sources. Uh, most of them should know better. Click OK. Make sure they're trained to say, hey, you know, I, this, this doesn't make any sense. I'm going to click no. But uh, unfortunately, it still happens where, where users just, just ignore it. They're, they're socially engineered. Click OK and successfully, you know, open that back door. And uh, that concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching.